credibility. Bring in, let's bring in now Dan Bongino, former NYPD guy, former Secret Service agent, host of the Dan Bongino uh, show. Dan, uh, you heard Congressman Matt Gates. Uh, do you, do you yeah. share that sentiment? You know, in some respects I do, but I'd like to see this inspector general investigation by Mr. Horowitz play out. And I'll tell you why, Brian. The single most important question in politics right now for anyone, I know this, this case is very complicated, the fictitious Russian collusion case and the special counsel. Uh, is the American government under the Obama administration, was it spying on American citizens due to political information, not evidence of a crime? That dossier, was that dossier that Russian intelligence provided information slipped onto the Obama administration's desk in the White House and used to tr spy on the Trump team? Nothing can go any further until we get the answer to that question. And Rod Rosenstein and Andy McCabe over at the FBI know the answer and they could clear it up today. But they won't, and that should disturb everyone. And Dan, Mueller has come under fire because of the text messages that have surfaced between Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, both with the FBI. They yeah. discussed an insurance policy in the, that exchange. What do you think that insurance policy is that they were talking about? Well, let me tell you first that this is the single most biased, potentially corrupted investigation of consequence I've seen in modern American history. I mean, almost every single player in this investigation has some level of bias, whether it was the Strzok text messages, whether it was Andy McCabe's wife running as a Democrat. Uh, I mean, whether it was Jim Comey acknowledging he initiated the special counsel investigation by leaking information. This thing has stunk from the beginning. Uh, it, now, on the insurance policy, if that insurance policy stroke, uh, Strzok talked about with his love interest there was in fact the fake dossier planted on the Obama desk, we have a situation mm -hmm. where a constitutional republic spied on free American citizens based on political information and it was hijacked then the FBI by the Democrat Party. Dan, if Robert Mueller just goes out and says, listen, he, he's got uh, Mike Flynn on something unrelated to collusion. He's got uh, this other guy, Papadopoulos, because he didn't tell the truth about yeah. what he was doing. And he's got uh, Man, uh, Manafort on something that has nothing to do with President Trump. If he actually is going to continue on a way, in a nonpartisan way, the Podesta's brother would be also indicted because of what he was lobbying. He would do himself such a favor by what, as he's seeing problems, grabbing both right. sides, but he only sees seems to be grabbing one. Robert Mueller, who's supposed to be nothing but law and order, doesn't seem to be seeing that. He doesn't seem to see the bias that's playing, that, that seems to be uh, resonating on the right. Why is that? Yeah, because justice, unfortunately, right now is, is blind to Democrats. It's not blind to Republicans. Lady Justice sees Republicans as a target, uh, as a bullseye on him right now. But if he was, uh, Brian, he was married at the at, at the hip in his business yep. to Paul Manafort, mm. Tony Podesta, and we've heard absolutely nothing about that. All we know is he stepped that. aside. He stepped aside. Well, yeah. you know what? Grab yeah, him but back. He, and you <laughs> throw him in the house arrest. Right, but he stepped aside. He didn't step into a jail cell like potentially Paul Manafort. I'm not defending Manafort. Listen, but my whole premise, the whole premise to this case looks like it was founded on a dossier. That's the equivalent, Brian, of me as a yeah. former federal agent planting information in your house that's disingenuous, starting a federal investigation, and your neighbor gets arrested, and nobody goes, wait, how did this all start? Fake evidence in the beginning? That's how this whole thing started. There is no Russian collusion. There's no there there. There's not an ounce of evidence that this actually happened. Well, and Dan, switching gears here, I want to get your reaction. I'm sure you've seen yeah. the dust up with Sheila Jackson Lee, uh, who's come yeah. under fire over a United Airlines seat uh, that she was accused of taking from a, a passenger. Uh, and her response, she blamed racism. Uh, and and we've, we've looked at, we went through some of the headlines previously yeah. of some of her behavior in Congress. What's your reaction to that? Well, I want the audience to do yourselves a favor. I want you to Google Sheila Jackson Lee claims racism. Um, there's about 7 million pages on Google of Sheila Jackson Lee claiming racism. The NFL, the debt ceiling. Yeah, the debt ceiling. I didn't say that wrong. Racism over the debt ceiling, accusing various members of Congress of racism, accusing just about anyone uh, she can get her mitts on of racism. I mean, does the Democrat Party have anything else? Is this chronic victim status going to go on forever? I mean, are you so devoid of... Do you live in an intellectual vacuum where you have nothing else to talk about? And the sad part about this is 
Guys and ladies here, we all know that there's real, genuine racism out there that we still have to deal with, sadly. But it's claims like this, like, like yeah. a stereotypical racist to me. I mean, are you serious? Yeah. And she really d destroys the effort to combat genuine racism by just lobbing this charge out there. And it's the worst thing you can call someone, and she knows it. Right, especially mm -hmm. now. Now, let's talk about Baltimore. We know what happened a few yeah. years back with the riots in the streets, mm -hmm. and now we find out. Uh, with Freddie Gray situation at that time, yeah. they were told these cops were told bad people, bad, uh, bad methods. Law enforcement's got to be reformed. So they backed out a lot of those high crime areas. And look at the result: a record 343 homicides in 2017. A lot of these cops feel so threatened they're not going to go in there yeah. because they worry about their future, their families, their pensions. Is this the result? Yeah, I mean, the war on cops has turned into a war on, on inner city residents and citizens who deserve better. You know, I beg and plead. I, I know we've got people who watch us who are liberals living in big cities. Listen, I get it, okay? I grew up in a city. Uh, Republicans may not be your answer. I understand that. I'm a conservative. We may not have all the answers. But I can tell you right now, the answer to what's wrong is unquestionably the cancer of liberalism that has dominated these inner cities for years. Brian, everything they've touched, they've destroyed. They have been a forest fire from St. Louis to Cleveland to Baltimore. Everywhere they go, they decimate these communities, and there are good, great people there. You deserve better. You don't deserve this anymore. Put aside the ideological blinder for a minute and say, okay, I may not be a Republican, I may not be a conservative, but I most definitely am not what this is now and what's going on in my city is a cancer and that's the cancer of liberalism and i wish people would wake up to that well all right dan bongino dan appreciate your thoughts as as always in the crime explosion uh, have a great new year thanks dan the crime explosion